This video is all about the Sugai AXO spider-based power meter, a mid-budget power meter that's been on the market for quite some time now, and some recent updates have improved the product quite a lot. First of all, let's loop back to the pronunciation of, so I've heard it called Sigai, Sigai, but I best call this power meter the AXO power meter because I'm sure I'm butchering the name there. So my history with this power meter, I've been testing the AXO power meter since February 2020. I have 58 data sets. I have 80 hours of ride time comparing it to other meters. And I've sent lots and lots of data and observations over to the company for review. The summary of my experience with previous meters prior to this one was, and as I've posted on forums, they were really, really close to being accurate. However, they were both accurate and inaccurate. It was only when I observed them a few times that I got the numbers back and they just weren't lining up. And that makes life very, very hard. Is the power meter right? Yes. Is it wrong? Yes. Is it both right? And it's a bit of trouble trying to find out what exactly is going on with the meter. If a power meter is just inaccurate, easy. If it's offset by a bit, again, it's easy. We can diagnose what's going on. When it's both, it's a bloody nightmare. Anyhow, that's no longer happening with the newer unit. We'll get to that in a moment. Uh, the accuracy with the previous units also appeared to change based on firmware revisions. There was a quick succession of new firmwares coming out with the older units. Uh, they were uh, changing based on the firmware version. And there was also no way to scale the older meter. So when I got a unit that was off just a little bit, and I needed to tweak it, I couldn't do it myself. The company had to send me a brand new firmware customized for the unit I had. Along with that, the cadence was very, very jagged and they had an ant manufacturer ID of 255, which is for development. So things got off to a bit of a rocky start there. However, as I've said in the intro, a lot has changed in recent times with the newer units. And that's what today's video is all about. There's been firmware updates, the management app or the mobile app to manage the unit has been updated, and they now have their own Ant Manufacturer ID. It's 134, registered with Ant. So this unit arrived a few weeks back in the Llama Lab, and for those familiar with Cricket, after a little bit of knocking in or a few bedding in rides, the numbers were very, very good coming out of this unit. However, it did require a little bit of upscale. But before going down that rabbit hole, let's look at the technical specifications of this power meter. It's a spider-based power meter. The compatibility of these units is, well, across the board. Road, mountain bike, almost any modular crank set where you can remove the spider and put this in, it's compatible with. Uh, I see a lot of these on mountain bikes and one bikes. Wireless data, you get Ant Plus, Bluetooth Smart, Within those, you get total power, cadence, left-right balance, which is an estimate because it's a single point of measurement. Power accuracy is plus or minus 1% claimed by the company. Power up to 2000 watts, cadence up to 220 RPM. It's accelerometer based, so there's no magnets you need to stick on your frame. The battery is a rechargeable lithium ion with a claimed battery life of 300 hours. It has a USB recharger, active temperature compensation built into the unit. Auto zero is a feature, you back pedal and it will zero. Firmware upgradable via the app. The weight of the unit, well, it varies depending on the model, and there are quite a few models of these. They claim 101 grams for the SRAM 34110BCD version. I put this on the scale, you'll see that in just a moment. In the package, you get the spider, the charge cable, the manual, and some extra colored decals. Warranty, two years, and the price. As I said, it was mid-budget, around 329 US dollars, 330 euros, and doing the conversions around 440 Aussie dollars. Now you do need to plus taxes and shipping and any import duties on top of that, so do be aware. And it does require a crank set and chain rings as well. This just comes as the spider. Into the unboxing, we have the USB charge cable, some decals, the manuals. Let's have a closer look at the spider. Tells you which way to install the crank arm. Forget it, it's auto. I need that on a t-shirt. I love it. Uh, none of those match my bike, so I think I'll be sticking with the black that's on there. And the charge cable clips in just like that. One ten grams for the Eldu four bolt one ten BCD. I'll never be using the pink decal, so I've put it to good use labeling the USB cable. Mm -hmm. 
Loading up the management app, we connect to the AXO over Bluetooth. And from here, we can see the hardware version, power, cadence, left, right balance. If we were to write it in real time, signal, battery, you name it. There's quite a lot here to see. First thing we'll do though is check for firmware upgrades to see if we're on the latest version. And yes, we are. So 4.015 is what I'll be testing this with. And the power offset adjustment, we can bump up or down in 0.5% increments. I've got a feeling this is going to come in very handy soon. Okay, as this is only a spider, there's not a lot I can report on in regard to the ride. That's more to do with the crank set, the chain rings, etc. Now, what is interesting is the data, and I have lots to dive into. I have five data sets, but today I get to zip through them quickly, and you'll see why in just a moment. As always, here we are again on my favorite website on the internet, the DCR Analyzer Tool, where we can compare multiple power meters as an overlay and see how they stack up. This was about the fourth or fifth ride after what I call the knocking in of this power meter. This was a Zwift ride that I did indoors, uh, three route bridges around Mercury Island with a Llama lab test in the middle, up against the Kicker 5, Asioma Duo Shees, and the AXO power meter. First up, just diving into this numbers here, we can see 162, 164, 159. The AXO was a little bit lower than I expected. It shouldn't be lower than the kicker, given where it's located. It should be pretty much spot on with the ASIO Majuo Shees. So that was noted, and we'll dive into the Lama lab test performed in the same ride. Diving into the steady state section through here. And the scale there starts at 140, so that's why it looks a little worse than what it actually is. But we have 225 on the kicker five. We have 226 on the ASIO Majuo Shees. 219 on the AXO, again, a little bit off, but off by about the same percentage, which was good. That's a good thing because this does have scaling, remember. I'll skip the overs and unders and just go to the last little section through here. For this particular ride, 177, 179, 175, again, a little lower, but off by about the same amount. So with the new option within the mobile app of the AXO power meter to scale the unit up a little bit, that's exactly what I did by 3%. You can go in half percentages too, which is pretty cool. And I was very, very happy with what I was seeing. Kicking off with two indoor rides and two outdoor rides, we can sail straight through these because the numbers are really, really good. Okay, kick of five, Asioma Duo Shees, AXO. Jump in to the steady state here of the Llama Lab. Nothing to report here at all. 224 from the kicker, 226, 225.86. Job done. Simple as that. Into the sprint. This is, uh, I think, five seconds smooth. Again, just to make it a little easier on the eye here. Uh, into the sprint, all looking good. The pedals probably take the crown there for the peak, uh, 1151. The AXO, I would probably say clips just a little bit in the sprint. I'm talking 20 or 30 watts at 1200, so not a lot. Um, but as you can see there, as compared to other meters I've had recently, that holds the sprint very well. Into the overs and unders, which checks sort of the response time of both the Kicker 5, Asioma Duo Shees. Um, look, everything is looking really good there. I encourage you to go back to my other power meter videos and have a look at how other power meters perform in this section here. You'll know why I'm skipping through these pretty quickly. That looks really, really good. Uh, some flywheel speed tests there, which we'll dive into in another video for the Kicker 5, but again, that looks fine. The difference you see there in the blue line just dropping down, that's expected. Uh, two short, hard little accelerations and ramps, and look, everything's looking fine there, smooth at five seconds. Nothing really to worry about. 249, 247, 253. Uh, there's a few stops and starts in that as well, which sort of skews the averages you see along the bottom there. What I was happy to see was the consistency. So even after scaling up with that 3%, it was then equal or very, very close to the Asium and Duos. It didn't drop down, didn't drop too high. It was the same offset as what we saw in the initial test at 0% scaling. Jumping to the second indoor test with ERG after the warm up. We'll have a look at these sections through here. So these are five minute blocks. Again, I'm using these five minute blocks because my previous video on another power meter showed what happens when a power meter is off. So anyway, 255, 270, 300, 300. Uh, the numbers along the bottom for average is 238, 240, 239.67. Doesn't get any closer than that. Super happy with what I was seeing for those erg mode tests with the kicker five. Short ramp and a short sprint at the end of that. Ramp test is fine. 
The offset you see there by the kicker is probably just a recording interval or something, but that's really, really close for that, given I just stopped pedaling. That is five seconds averaged on screen. And the sprint, um, the Axo just a little bit off, probably 40 watts under, but give or take at 1200 watts, that's not too bad. So indoors, that's a pass on the Llama lab test and a pass on those five minute block erg workouts. Jumping to outdoors, where things get a lot more chaotic with vibrations and stops and starts and outdoors is really hard, but Look what we have here. It's looking pretty good. Um, first couple of minutes there, we'll call that a warm up. We will jump into the sprint. Dunk. Um, five second average again. Just clipping the sprint by, what do we have here? 50 or 60 watts at around 1200. So just a little bit at the top end on the sprint. I am being very, very nitpicky here. There's nothing really else to poke and prod at this thing. It's actually pretty good. Um, some steady state work there, 247, 251, a lot of ups and downs, a lot of stops and starts. That's looking pretty good for outdoors. Some short accelerations through the center there with some climbing and some more steady state high. I'll just randomly grab this section through here. On average, 218.9, 219.64. That's looking really good. Pulling up the final data set from another outdoor ride up against the Asio Majuro shoes again, this time on a slightly hillier course. Um, the whole looks pretty good to be honest, 202, 203 average. Here I've just got one of the little sprints that I've performed. Um, the data offset there is just a recording interval or a sampling interval. I could line that up within the analyzer, but let's just roll with it for now for ease of use. And this is five second averaged and the peak here goes to the Axo at 1186 and the other pedals are at 11.71. So actually pretty close with that one. It wasn't clipping off that. Um, and you can see there, 2.10, 2, 2.10, 2, so that small little section, things are lining up well. I think after the sprint there, I just switched off the power display on the second head unit and just rode my bike and forgot about it. Again, a good test of a power meter if you can just have it record data and not even worry about it. It did the job, it really did well. Uh, some short out of the saddle efforts uh, through here. This is called the Serenity Loop in Ballarat. This is a Miller's Road, 267, 269. A little bit of offset there, but this was out of the saddle, looking really, really good on those two sections through there. Another random data grab, uh, 228, 228. Uh, yeah, look, that does make me happy. That's exactly what I expect from a power meter, and it's very, very consistent. Um, what else to show within the power? I think that's really about it. If you couldn't tell already, I'm happy with that number with that 3% scaling. Another random section here, uh, 240, 243 with some stop starts in there. It's all looking pretty good. Covering off the two other metrics you get from this power meter, left, right balance and cadence. Pulling up the left, right balance here on the outdoor ride that I did. And look, it's a spider base power meter. So it's going to be an estimate of your left, right balance, not your true left, right balance, like you'll get from a true left, right power meter, such as the Asio Majuro Shees. Now they were reporting 98, 103 for the watts I was doing on average for this ride. So a little heavier on the right. The Axo was reporting 103 and 98. So a little heavier on the left. If I was a gambling man, the money would be on the Asiom as being more correct in this case, given they are two independent power meters. So the left right number you get from these meters, mm, your mileage may vary. The cadence from the Axo was always one or two RPM lower than the estimated cadence from the kicker or the cadence I was getting from the Asio Majuro Shees. So here we have 79.68 on average or 77.37. That does take in the starts and stops, so that could be a little off for there, but we jump into a steady state section. 87, 86, so one RPM off. Not much, but it was consistently low, just a little bit low in the cadence side of things. Another thing of note while we're still here in the DCR Analyzer tool was the data quality from these units was good. No dropouts indoors or out. Lots to be happy about there because I had a power meter that was giving very, very good results indoors and out. Uh, a few things of note, this was from a single unit only. It's listed as hardware revision eight. It was on the latest firmware and I did have to scale that up by 3% to get those numbers that I was seeing. Diving into a few of the forums where people are discussing the AXO power meters and the numbers they're getting from them. And it's not uncommon to see them reading a little lower than a smart trainer or a set of power meter pedals. I'm not saying all of these meters will need an upscale, but they will need verification just to be sure. So if you own one of these meters or looking at buying new, I would ride it for a week and then put it to the test up against a smart trainer or a set of Asioma power meter pedals. If you don't have a set of Asioma power meter pedals, just ask your friends. I'm sure someone's got them, they're quite popular. 
So after first getting my hands on one of these axometers 19 months ago, it's time to finally wrap this one up. Look, my take on these meters, look, the new version was much more reliable and more accurate with that scaling than the previous models. Look, if you've got a bike with a compatible modular crank set, you could just take the spider off and put this spider on. It's a cheap way to add power. You can keep your same pedals, you can keep your same bottom bracket, and you can keep your same chain rings. That's pretty cool. But I guess it comes down to price, if you want to stick with the big name brands or not, and support, which is key. So with support, it's always something to consider before making a purchase such as this. If you're buying direct from China or direct from AliExpress, your mileage may vary. But as new distributors pop up in different regions, and if you purchase through there, you're probably gonna have a better experience. Uh, this unit was sent over from the UK, and if you were to purchase from the UK, they've got you back for the warranty and support. Anyhow, as I said, after 19 months, we can put this one to bed and finally get this review out there. If you're an owner of one of these units, please let me know in the comments. How has your unit been tracking? How's the support been from the company direct or from your distributor or reseller? I'm interested to know. And with that, thanks for watching.